Welcome to Nehru Place in Delhi. Possibly the most vibrant and virulent metaphor of India's IT revolution. A hectic hub of free-flowing electronic gadgets and software hawked with the aggression of a vegetable vendor. The market here showcases how information technology has transformed us from the inside. Thoughtless consumerism backed by multi-billion dollar ad spends have created artificial needs that have altered the way we think. It is normal now to keep changing gadgets even if they are in perfect working condition, just to be up to date with latest style trends. It is normal now to keep upgrading even if we don't need it, just because it is cool to do so. However, there is a flip side to this lifestyle shift. Much of the new gadgets here are soon going to become e-waste. This e-waste will then be separated, sorted, parts will be sold and discarded, most of it in disorganized and uncharted sweatshops. Welcome to the murky world of a lawless, remorseless business of profit that leads to immense environmental and human hazard. Electronic waste or e-waste is an emerging threat to the entire world. The problem is more acute in nations like India, the second largest e-waste generator in Asia. 1.7 million tons of electronic waste get generated here annually. More than 90% of this e-waste ends up in the informal sector for recycling and disposal. इलेक्ट्रिक का सामान जब भी खराब हो जाता है तो मैं उसे कबाड़ी में बेच देता हूँ कबाड़ी को दे दे स्क्रैप में बेचना पड़ता है कबाड़ी को कबाड़ी को बेच देते हैं कबाड़ी वाले लेके चला जाता है आई वे सेल इट ऑफ टू द कबाड़ी वाला सेल इट फॉर एज अ स्क्रैप टू समबडी देयर इज नो रिस्पाइट इनसाइड इन इंडिया बाय द ईयर 2020 कंप्यूटर वेस्ट इज सेट टू इंक्रीज बाय 500% एंड ई वेस्ट फ्रॉम मोबाइल फोन्स विल बी एन अस्टाउंडिंग 18000 टाइम्स हायर 70% of e-waste in India is from the commercial sector both public and private although individual households currently account for just 15% of the e-waste consumption of electronic and electrical gadgets has gone up exponentially in the last few years making them a substantial e-waste generator for the coming time as if india's own e-waste wasn't enough A mind-boggling amount of e-waste also arrives here through ships every year. They are usually imported from developed nations who cannot dispose them off cheaply in their own countries due to stringent environmental norms. In India, costs of e-waste recycling are much lower and law enforcement is weak, and hence the country has become a dumping destination. From shipyards they are transported to the nation's dry ports local dealers make bids on the containers the material is sorted and reaches various recyclers mostly from the informal sectors <laughs> Delhi besides being India's capital also has the dubious distinction of being the nation's leading informal e-waste processing center
The Sealampur market on the northeastern fringe of Delhi is the nation's largest electronics dismantling market. While places like Sealampur, Shastrinagar, Turkman Gate, Mosbur and Mustafabad specializes in processing e-waste, eastern parts of Delhi like Mandoli and Loni are the epicenters of metalwork recovery. Some of these works have also spread to satellite towns like Muradabad, Muzaffarnagar and Meerut. The processes involved are replete with hazards. For instance, for circuit board recycling, one has to first remove the chips, condensers and capacitors by using blowtorch. After this, the leftover boards are put to open fires to retrieve the metal solder and copper. Alternatively, metals are also extracted by soaking the circuit boards in open acid bath. E-waste contains many toxic substances and creates serious pollution upon disposal. Cadmium and lead in the circuit boards, lead oxide and cadmium in monitor cathode ray tubes, mercury in switches and flat screen monitors, cadmium in computer batteries, polychlorinated biphenyls in older capacitors and transformers and brominated flame retardants on printed circuit boards, plastic casings, cables and PVC cable insulations. A list that just goes on and on and on. Many. 19-year-old Salman stays with his family in Sealampur. Like most of his neighbours, his family migrated from the rural interiors of the nation. These are people who are in lookout for easy jobs that do not require special skills. Salman did not have to try too hard to get a job as an e-waste dismantler. It is a vocation that does not ask for much know-how or training. The workshop where he works specializes in circuit board processing. Dismantling and rummaging through discarded electronic goods, Salman and hundreds of others like him look for precious metals and other valuables. They are a part of a huge industry thriving in the underbelly of India's urban centers, the informal e-waste recycling industry. While shooting this film, we also spotted many children, some of them just 10 years old, working in these small one-room workshops, all working in so-called factories with pathetic working conditions. The workers in this informal sector work with no protective gear whatsoever. They treat all the waste manually, breaking, sorting or gassing. They are naturally highly exposed to the chemicals present in the gadgets and these harmful chemicals easily enter their bodies. These processes release a wide variety of heavy metals into the air, soil and water. This includes lead, cadmium and mercury. Their toxic impacts on the human body are irreversible. Some chemicals like cadmium and lead, they not only cause irritation but they also get into the body through lungs. And then they get distributed throughout the body. Lead for example will reach children's brain and will affect their intelligence, mental development, intellectual development, will also cause anemia and cadmium uh, causes kidney damage. Unknowingly, Salman has become one of its many victims. Of late, he has started feeling dizzy and weak, but he doesn't know why. I don't know 
घर वाले कहते हैं नज़र जल्दी लग जाती है फिर दोस्त यार बाहर वाले टोकते रहते हैं मुझे फिर तबीयत खराब हो जाती है मेरी उम्र उम्र उन्नीस साल की है और उन्नीस साल में मुझे तकलीफ़ हो गई हार्ट बीट बढ़ जाती है मेरी घबराहट होती है ब्लड प्रेशर तेज हो जाता है ये है जब दिल की धड़कन बढ़ती है ना मैं खड़ा नहीं हो जाता Most e-waste recycling workers are illiterate and desperate for employment. Their choice is clear: either die of hunger or of metal poisoning. They know this is the only way they can earn their living for themselves and their families. Hence they are not worried about the chemicals or their health. pervasive lack of awareness compounds the problem let us ask ourselves are we even aware of the fate of the mobile phone we just discarded to buy a new touch phone or a new laptop are you aware of what happens to your phone after you discard it jab aapko baadi wala ko phone dete ho to aapko pata hai uske sath kya karta hai nahi ji banane wale ko pata hota hai ji jab wale ko pata hoga kahan jata wo mare ko is bare mein nahi pata मैम उसके जो पार्ट सही होते होंगे वो उसे आगे कंपनी में दे देते होंगे उसका रिसाइकलिंग होता होगा वो नए मोबाइल में लग के आते होंगे मुझे नहीं मालूम क्या करता है वो मैं तो बस डाल के आ जाऊँ कबाड़ी को दे देता हूँ ये तो जो बनाते हैं उनको मालूम होगा किससे क्या थ्रेट है और आ, क्या हेल्थ हेजर्स है मेरे, मेरे को नहीं मालूम नहीं अवेयर तो नहीं हूँ मैं इस बारे में क्या करता हूँ कबाड़ी वाले नो एंड वाई शुड आई के We do not know that we are creating a problem for ourselves. More so because nobody tells us about it. Regular campaigns on e-waste management are the need of the hour. I I don't have any heard any campaign on e-waste. It is the first time I am heard this thing. नहीं ऐसा कुछ मैंने कभी नहीं देखा. I have heard of the wastage, basically wastage regarding mobile phones. Uh, like the old older one Nokia phones which were not which were which, which are not in use right now so people throw it away and there there should be a way of recycling it recycling those uh, using those phones again and again no i i not seen any advertisement on facebook also any write ups on electronic uh, waste at all no i don't think so i have seen anything in, on electronic waste i haven't seen any campaign on electronic waste as yet and i'd be glad if there's something that we can join and be more aware about it'll be it'll be great i have no clue yeah maybe nokia uh, you know outlets specifically in south ex so i have seen there is a there was a box so wherein we can just put our uh, yeah and it there was something a uh, advertisement or a campaign wherein you will get some refund or money or something like that nahi 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 maine nahi dekha no 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 i didn't see any electronics west campaigns before In 2011, India issued rules on e-waste management which came into effect from 2012, mentioning the responsibilities and prescribing the duties to be performed by the producer, collection centers, consumers, dismantlers and recyclers. How many of these are being followed is a separate question altogether. If you read the law, the law says very clearly that the producers and the government, the state, and the municipalities are meant to create awareness, but they're not doing it. Uh, it's a question you should ask them why they, why aren't they doing it? We've just we've fin recently finished a report on the performance of state pollution boards and the industry, and it's a dismal performance. They have uh, almost uh, uh, no implementation of the law. Consumers are reluctant to recycle their expensive gadgets without any compensation and this aggravates the problem. The issues of e-waste and e-waste workers are the last on anyone's priority. How many people in India would like to would like to just drop their cell phone you know uh, in a drop box Uh, for which they have spent a good eight, ten thousand rupees without getting anything in return. Own consumer नहीं expect करता कि मेरे को जो चीज़ मेरी ख़राब हुई है उसके बदले में कुछ ना कुछ मेरे को मिले. The rack pickers, if I if I give my phone, they will give me money based on the weight. I'm not asking for money from uh, these companies, but they could do with giving these people certain certificates which say that these particular products are 
recycled properly. Because I don't see any point in that. I mean, I, I'm not getting benefited by it. Probably if they're issuing some coupon or something so that from the next purchase I get certain discount or something or uh, some accessories uh, as, as a gift with the next purchase from the same company, I'll be more happy in that. The amount of money spent on research and development of electronic goods is phenomenal. Manufacturers use top-of-the-line facilities with the best brains working for them to make their products more consumer-friendly. They invest on fancy retail outlets and undertake large ad spends to boost sales. Yet, when it comes to the question of recycling, they do almost nothing. All the companies who manufacture and sell here are the same companies, they're all global giants who do it in Europe, US, China, Japan, everywhere. And they follow the rules everywhere. Why don't they follow it here? In Europe, they can't survive if they don't follow the rules. They have some fantastic systems in Europe. So why do the same companies have the systems there and not here? Because we're willing to take nonsense from them. It's a complete case of double standards. It's not like they don't know what to do. They've been, they know what to do for decades. They know exactly what to do. They know the costing, they know how to set it up. They know it better than anybody else. They've done it everywhere in the world. But we are willing to tolerate all this nonsense. Recycling of e-waste is a multi-million rupee industry. There is big money in the industry. But when it comes to health, safety and environment issue, nobody seems to care. And yes, if the e-product manufacturers and the informal e-waste industry can so blatantly violate law and order in India's capital region, we shudder to think what would be happening in smaller cities. My name is Malik, I and that was just about one unit. There are hundreds of others, and the informal business shows no signs of slowing down. MCD वाले आते हैं, मालिक को बुलाते हैं, बात-बात करते हैं उससे, नाम हम साइन ऑन करवा दाओ, और पैसे लेते हैं चले। Yes, there are official guidelines, but concerned authorities are often found clueless or evasive. I want to know if there has been an environment uh, issue with uh, e-waste. Not it as such. It is not going to the solid way. Nobody is dumping. There was a, uh, anybody being uh, penalized because of wrong management of e-waste? Any management? So far, as far as I know, no. Because the rule is very recent. Okay. It has came only in May 2012. Uh, it's a very big sector and, a and all big names. It's very attractive also. Recycling, however, is an important solution, especially if we consider that e-waste contains many valuable and rare materials. This has promoted recyclers in the formal sector that follow safety rules, but they are facing stiff competition from the unorganized sectors. Even people who have shifted from the informal to the formal sector are reconsidering their decision. Due to proper implementation of the rules, their profits have come down. अभी फॉर्मलाइज़ जब से काम करा है तो हम कुछ तो कुछ कमा पा नहीं रहे हैं बल्कि अपने जेब से या उधार लेके भी अपना घर चला रहे हैं। फॉर्मल सेक्टर तो बढ़ेगा कैसे? फॉर्मल सेक्टर तो केवल आज कागजों में रह गया है। जब तक गवर्नमेंट कोई पैरामीटर तय नहीं करेगी, अपने इन्फोर्समेंट टीम नहीं The formal licensed recyclers have many reasons to be unhappy. E-waste that should reach them is reaching the informal sector and even within the formal sector, there are no streamlined systems. formal sector, there is no cross-checking. If I take someone from a government department, then there is no cross-checking. What did I take from the formal sector in the formal sector? लेकिन आज तक हमसे ना डीपीसीसी ने पूछा है किसी ने नहीं पूछा अगर हम कहीं से सामान लाए हैं तो हमसे भी नहीं पूछा गया 
कि आपने उस सामान का क्या करा तो जब हमसे नहीं पूछा जा रहा तो बड़ी मछलियां उनसे कौन पूछ रहा है It has been almost 18 months since Salman has been working in the e-waste factory. His heartbeats are getting even more irregular. He feels even weaker. But like any other teenager, he has been dismissing it. When we forced him to go to a doctor, he realized how he has been gambling with his life every day at the factory. Mr. Bajan ne uthta tha. Aur ye board nahi bhara jata tha haathon se. Haath chal jate the sare. Aur jalta tha dard hota jalte pe. और धुएं से मिर्चें लगती थी आंखों में तो मतलब परेशानी होती है धुएं से सीने में सांस नहीं आती मगर कुछ पता नहीं है कब बीमार पड़े आए धुएं में कुछ पता नहीं तो अंदर धुआं जाता है ना इसका केमिकल होता है धुएं में ये अंदर बेकार कर देता है India's enormous growth potential in electronics has attracted many global manufacturing giants but under the glitter of their surface lies a shocking story of gross negligence and opportunism We did try to talk to a number of big league electronic manufacturers but they did not respond On the contrary we found that most manufacturers have not taken any effective measures to raise public awareness even basic concepts like that of a recycle bin are unheard of in their brand shops and retail outlets do you have an e-waste bin in your store no we don't have hi uh, do you have an e-waste bin <coughs> no 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 ma'am a mobile recycling bin you are conscious about it nahi mujhe pata nahi hai e-waste bin yeah yeah we have a e-waste bin not mail bin bill bill yeah we all like bin. a dustbin dustbin so yeah recycling mobile phones No, no, we don't have. No, no. No. We are not basically into hardware. We are only into kind of CD matches. No, we don't think about that so much. E-waste bin. E-waste bin? Yes, for okay. recycling old mobile phones. Yeah, you have it. No, I can't answer you each and everything because we are not actually authorized to. Do. I'm sorry, ma'am. वो नहीं हो पाएगा because हमें authority नहीं है. The electronics market in India jumped from 11.5 billion US dollars in 2004 to 32 billion US dollars in 2009, making it one of the fastest growing electronics market worldwide. Besides, India's large and growing middle class of 320 to 340 million people have a huge disposable income to buy consumer goods. Goes without saying that electronic consumerism is here, not just to stay but to rule. Unfortunately, the same seems to be true for e-waste as well. The kind of uh, the understanding of what e-waste is and uh, what kind of a problem it can pose to us in the next coming 20 years, people are not able to foresee it. We have the choice of ignoring the clear and present danger of electronic and electrical waste until it becomes unmanageable and turns into a catastrophe. or we can start processes to reverse this tide at least start building awareness and public opinion for salman his choices are limited he has to continue working at the factory too much depends on the money he brings home to his family but yes like any other human he wants to continue living so he is saving up to return to his original family vocation that of a tailor there are thousands of workers like salman still working in hundreds of ramshackle informal e-waste recycling units across the nation these so called factories are pushing them towards a painful slow and inevitable death the section 5 you can close them down you can close down all the recycling units you can close them overnight you can close them down that's the power the government has why don't they do it these units are the only means of livelihood to thousands of workers mostly young they do need to earn to survive but why do they have to do it under life threatening conditions Why can't e-waste recycling happen while strictly enforcing the guidelines with better working conditions for the workers? 
why can't consumers try and become a part of the solution? They can create pressure on manufacturers to come up with proper recycling measures. They can force the government to strictly enforce the guidelines. Why can't the brands that spend millions on promoting their products think about managing e-waste and set up systems for consumers? The question is, do they at all care? Do you really care? Right now, in a neighborhood not far from here, countless lives are being silently snuffed away. Maybe they are getting breathless by the toxic fumes of a laptop or a mobile phone that you have discarded. Does anyone care for them? And all of us are also getting poisoned by the air, soil and water, which is polluted by the toxins released. People come cheap in India, and this is just slow poisoning. That does not make headline news.